More coolly charismatic than Drop Dead Handsome, Richard Gere was one of the most successful sex symbols of the 80s and early 90s. Possessing something of an actual talent in addition to his good looks, Gere has proven himself to be a versatile actor since first starring as the pickup artist who creeps out Diane Keaton in Looking for Mr. Goodbar. Capable of playing everything from romantic leads and action heroes to medieval knights and ruthless villains, Gear has moved beyond his role as cinematic eye candy to become one of the more enduring actors of his generation. Born in Philadelphia on August 31, 1949, Gear had a strict Methodist upbringing in upstate New York. Following his 1967 high school graduation, he studied philosophy and film at the University of Massachusetts, only to leave school to pursue an acting career two years later. Gear became a professional actor and sometime musician, performing theatrically in Seattle and New York and attempting unsuccessfully to form a rock band. In 1973 the young actor landed in London, where he gained prominence playing Danny Zuko in Greece, a role he would later reprise on Broadway. While in London, Gear gained the privilege of becoming one of the few Americans ever to work with Britain's Young Vic Theater, with which he appeared in The Taming of the Shrew. Back in the US, Gear made his feature film debut in 1974 with a tiny part in Report to the Commissioner. He returned to the stage the following year as part of the cast of an off-Broadway production of Sam Shepard's Killer's Head, following Gear's turn in the 1977 Looking for Mr. Goodbar, he and Shepard would again collaborate in Terence Malick's Breathtaking Days of Heaven, 1978. In 1979, Gear won considerable theatrical acclaim for his performance in the Broadway production of Martin Sherman's Bent, and the next year enjoyed his first shot at screen stardom with the title role in Paul Schrader's American Gigolo. Though the film was not a major critical or box office success, it did earn recognition for the actor. Who had taken the role after John Travolta turned it down. Gear did not become a real star until he appeared opposite Deborah Winger in An Officer and a Gentleman in 1982, but his bona fide celebrity status was jeopardized with roles in several poorly received films including King David, 1985. A lead role in Francis Ford Coppola's 1980 for The Cotton Club also failed to perk up the actor's career, despite a legendary director and stellar cast, the film received mixed reviews and poor box office turnout. With no recent major successes behind him by the end of the decade, it looked as if Gear's career was in a tailspin. Fortunately, he abruptly pulled out of the dive in 1990, first as a cop-slash-crime lord in Mike Figgis' internal affairs and then as a ruthless businessman who finds true love in the arms of prostitute Julia Roberts in the smash romantic comedy Pretty Woman. Back in the saddle again, Gear continued to star in a number of films, including Summersby, 1993, Intersection, 1994, and First Night, 1995. In 1996, he was highly praised for his portrayal of an arrogant hotshot attorney in Primal Fear, and in 1999 found further financial, if not critical, success starring opposite Julia Roberts in Runaway Bride. The following year the actor enjoyed some of his best reviews to date as a gynecologist at once devoted to and bewildered by all of the women in his life in Robert Altman's aptly titled Dr. TVE The Women, many critics noted that Gear seemed to have finally come into his own as an actor, having matured amiably with years and experience. In 2002, Gear played the too perfect for words husband to Diane Lane in Unfaithful. While the film was not a huge critical success, Gear was praised for a game performance, and Lane was nominated for an Oscar. Unfortunately for Gear, a starring role in the Mothman prophecies didn't do too much for his resume, while critics once again lauded the actor's intensity, the film itself was widely hailed as too slow-paced to properly showcase his talents. Luckily, the same couldn't be said for his performance in the multiple Oscar-winning Chicago, which found Gear in the role of another hotshot lawyer, this time alongside a diverse and talented cast including Catherine Zeta-Jones, Renee Zellweger, and Queen Latifah. In 2004, Gear starred opposite Jennifer Lopez and Oscar-winning Hollywood veteran Susan Sarandon in Peter Chelsom's Shall We Dance. On and off-screen, Gear uses his acting clout to promote his various political ventures. A devout Buddhist, Gear has been deeply involved with the struggles surrounding the Dalai Lama and the worldwide struggle for human rights The documentaries Return to Tibet, 2003, and Shadow over Tibet, 
Stories in Exile, 1994, featured Gear as a prime interviewee, while 1997's Red Corner starred the versatile actor as a victim of a grossly corrupt Chinese court system. In 2005, Gear played a professor of religious studies in director David Siegel's drama B Season, and enjoyed success in 2007 with The Hoax, an edgy biographical drama, and The Hunting Party, a political tragedy comedy in which he played a discredited reporter mistaken as a member of a CIA hit squad. The actor joined the Cassette of Knights in Rodant in 2008, and worked with Hilary Swank in Amla, the 2009 Amelia Earhart biopic. Gear took on the role of a burnt-out cop in Training Day, 2009, director Antoine Fuqua's gritty crime drama Brooklyn's Finest. Major Works In 1978, Gear was cast in Days of Heaven, which was well received at the box office. Considered one of his greatest earlier works, the film went on to win a number of awards, and was even showcased at the Cannes Film Festival. This was one of the first few films that established his acting skills. Pretty Woman, which released in 1990, is a romantic comedy, starring Richard Gere and Julia Roberts. This is regarded as one of his major works because he had appeared in a string of unsuccessful films before landing a role in Pretty Woman. With this film, he bounced back and cemented his place as one of the best leading men in Hollywood. He went on to earn a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actor for this movie which collected a whopping $463,406,268 at the box office. In 2002, he starred in Chicago, a musical film which also starred Catherine Zeta-Jones and Renee Zellweger. The film grossed $306,776,732 around the world. He went on to receive a Golden Globe Award for his performance in the movie. Awards VE Achievements In 1979, he won the David D. Donatello Award for Best Foreign Actor for Days of Heaven. He was made the president of the jury of the 19th Moscow International Film Festival in 1995. He won the National Board of Review Freedom of Expression Award for the film Red Corner in 1997. In 2003, he won the Golden Globe Award for Best Actor for the film Chicago. In 2008, he won the Independent Spirit Robert Altman Award for his performance in In Not There. On February 16, 2012, he was presented the George Eastman Award for his contributions to the film industry. He was presented the Medal of Gratitude on May 12, 2012, by the Albanian President Bamir Topi.